today we're going to look at these little infrared sensors. The kind of things you find in those infrared thermometers. Roller titles. Is that it? <sighs> So you can see there are two obvious differences. One has this sort of shroud on and one doesn't. You can buy them without shroud, as you can see there, or with a small shroud, a medium shroud, or quite a long shroud of around an inch or so. And what that does is it allows you to sense the temperature of something and only that something from a greater distance. Let me explain. If we look at the one without a shroud, you can see that it can accept temperatures or it's sensing the temperature of a wide range and the further away from whatever it is you're trying to measure the temperature of then the more it's taking up the temp taking in temperatures from other objects sort of like this average going on if you have a shroud on then you can see that the the beam becomes narrowed and the longer the shroud the narrower that infrared source is coming in so it senses a smaller area, but if you're looking at targeting a particular thing over a reasonable distance, then you're going to want a shroud of some sort. So, what can they work with? They can work with ESP32s, Arduino Nanos, Arduino Unos. These are 5 volt devices, these two. This is 3.3. You don't mean to make any allowance for that. These are 3.3 and 5 volt tolerant. You can just whack them on and they'll just work without any attention to details such as voltage shifters or anything like that. Just connect them up and go. So on that note, let's have a look at the wiring for these. So let's wire it up. The connections are labelled on the front here. We have voltage in, ground, SCL and SDA. And if you've been knocking around with Arduino for long enough or any sort of microcontroller, you'll spot that SCL and SDA are actually an R-squared C bus. So let's connect onto there with these four wires. Let's put them on. Straighten out. Whack them on there. There we go. All in. And let's have a look what we're connected to. So voltage in and ground are <laughs> voltage in black. That just seems so wrong, doesn't it? But whatever, I'm going to go with it. And grey is my grind. So black is my life. It's not saying right, but I'm going with what I've done. Black 5 volts then on my situation here. And grey is the ground. Where's the ground connection? There we go. And what's that left me with? It's left me with uh, SCL was white and SDA is purple. Now on the side, we know, you know, they have dedicated little connectors for SCL and SDA. On the Arduino Nano, I believe it's A4 is SDA, A5 is SCL, which actually would be repeated on here as well, just that so they broke out those two extra connections for convenience for you. And on the ESP32, you can connect them up to virtually any pin, it's quite flexible. And you just have to, in the code, which I'll show you shortly, you have to just state which pins you're using for SCL and SDA. So, put them aside. Right, that's where were we? So, we need SDA. We'll connect up first, which was the purple one, which means SCL is the white one that's left over. There we go. So, that's all wired up. Let's show you the code and the library you'll need to use. So here we are in our Arduino environment. To get the library for these sensors, we can go to the library manager. If you're using an older version of Arduino, you should like to get your library manager from there, but to be via sketch and include library like that. So you're going to type in GY-906 and you'll see a library that's titled Vega MLX 90614. That is the library we need, despite it not looking like that. You can see I've got it installed. So install that for yourselves and have a look at the example that comes with it. So if I just close my library manager down, uh, and examples, and down to where it says Vega, down here at the bottom. Only one example, but it's enough. I don't need more than one. 
and you can see it's really really quite short this example is designed for a board called the MLX 90614 Aries board I'm honestly not familiar with it however it's easily changed to whatever board it is ESP32, Arduino Uno, Nano, whatever easy peasy so if you look we've included the library there and then we create an object called MLX there and for this Aries board pins 3 and 4 would be SDA and SCL respectively we want to use the Arduino Uno and if you remember we had separate pins for that and in this Arduino ID environment we can just type in these constants for SDA and SCL there and the environment will sort everything out assign the correct pin numbers to it if you're using the SP32 you'd assign some of your own pin numbers that you're using there for that not a problem so in the setup we just print out that we're about to do that that's about it really I've already created the object data and then we go into the loop which does all the work not that there's a lot of work the library is doing all the heavy lifting so the first thing we do we get a temperature using the ML MLX object and it's called read ambient temperature so what this little sensor has on board as well is actually an ambient ambient temperature sensor as well so if you want to read that you can do and you can display that we come down and there it is displayed there then we come down here and we use the MLX object again and we read the target temperature that's the one that's actually reading what's coming in via that sensor via the infrared sensor and you will display it there now it reads in temperature degrees Celsius I don't know whether it will read directly in Fahrenheit whether there's an equivalent command to this but in Fahrenheit but if it doesn't I haven't looked but if it doesn't then it's a trivial matter to do a little tiny bit of math to convert that to Fahrenheit for those that like to work in Fahrenheit -y. so let's upload that to our board and we will then do a test of our sensor so let's go to serial monitor that's where everything's going to come out from so tools serial monitor make sure you've got it set to the board that it says in the uh, setup routine so 115200 115200 and you can see it's reading an ambient temperature 24.11 and a target temperature 22.63 as it points at my it's pointed towards my um, mat here so let's just point that at my hand let's see what we get and you can see we've jumped up to 31.7 some people might be shouting yeah but surely body temperature is around 36.37 that is internal body temperature not skin temperature you can do some calculations to work out what your internal temperature is based on skin temperature it's not that straightforward and I did a video which I'll link in down below on creating a Star Trek sick bay monitor that used uh, some work done by I think it was Lancaster University they did a research paper into how to work out core body temperature from skin temperature quite clever stuff I'll put a link in down below so we can see there's target temperature 31 point so, such and such and I'm just going to start moving this slowly away and you can see it's changing quite dramatically I've only gone from about a centimetre 31 moved it to two centimeters dropping to 29 about five centimeters or so and dropping to 27 that doesn't sound brilliant doesn't it does it now you remember this is all caused because of that wide beam angle so let's put the one on with a shroud we'll just unplug this just to make sure we don't break anything all that we should do with this with an i squared c connection and get the other sensor up here and we'll just do a straight swap everything's in the same position pull that off there put that on there there we go plug that back in might have to reset the serial monitor not sure see if it starts going again it is yeah off it goes and we'll do the same thing again we'll put it relatively close you'll see a temperature about 31 ish 32 ish move about a centimeter more away still about the same about four centimeters now by this point we dropped to about 28 about six centimeters have dropped to about 27 and if you look it's pretty much bang on the money because of that shroud let's just see how far we can go 
we're probably about eight centimeters there before we see any reasonable dropping there we're dropping ish so about 10 centimeters that size of shroud if you wanted a bigger distance for them for, for the measuring you need to go for also a longer shroud but they are reasonably more expensive so look at what application you're doing as to whether you actually want to pay the extra money for those with a bigger shroud on why would you use one of these in contrast to say a more common sensor such as this one I'm just about to get for you one second so these are quite common very very cheap I'll put on the screen what its sensor is actually called I forget the name um, this is not the actual sensor this is a protective outer the actual sensor is inside it actually just look at that look like a small transistor and in fact I use that sort of style on my Star Trek one because this actually techs you've got quite a bit of metal to heat up there before it warms up the sensor inside however these are designed to go into hot liquids so you can use them quite easily in hot liquids up to around about 90 to 100 100 or so degrees why wouldn't you use this because these are really cheap especially the uh, transistor version like this, this sort of metal shielding and covering on well this particularly if you're using it like this even even if it is just the simple sort of like transistor one that responds reasonably quickly it does not respond as quickly as this this one is practically instant these can take several seconds to come up to the actual well more than that if it can take 30 seconds to a minute sometimes for one of these style thermometer uh, temperature sensors to come up to temperature with this one if you look i will just point it to something random in the just you know generally into the room put my hand here and jumps hand away hand on hand away hand on so instant so if you need instant sensing of a temperature then this is the way to go with these it's just something for you know it doesn't change quickly or rapidly over time so that is pretty much it i think we've covered everything there so thank you very much for sticking to the end with this thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for my patrons who sponsor me you'll find other ways of supporting the channel down below if you feel so much you want to so that's it catch you next time take care